Hello and welcome back year 10 to our fourth lesson in the organic chemistry topic and today's lesson is called cracking and alkanes and by the end of today's lesson hopefully you are going to be able to describe why cracking of hydrocarbons is necessary and second thing I'd like you to be able to compare the structure of these two families of the alkanes which we've learned about already and alkenes which will be new in today's lesson. So before we uh, look at today's new content, we need to look back and just practice some of the skills and the content from previous. Two questions on the screen for you now. Press pause on the video and see if you can answer both those questions. OK, how do you do that? So the first question then uh, says petrol is more flammable than bitumen. Compare the size of chain of petrol and bitumen. So if you think about it, short chains are more easily flammable than long chains and that's the thing this question is exploring short chains set on fire a lot easier than long chains so therefore petrol must be a shorter chain than bitumen and that's the comparison the second question says explain why c12h26 is a member of the alkane family it's that thing you need to be able to recall it's that general formula for the alkanes the alkane general formula is cnh2n plus 2 and if you look at um, the one in the question, number of C's is 12. So we're going to go 2 times 12 is 24 and add 2 is 26. And that is why it's a member of the family. OK, let's just think about fractional distillation for a second. That takes place in an oil refinery. And the purpose of fractional distillation is that oil goes into the oil refinery. And the things that come out are, are alkanes like LPG, the gas, uh, petrol, diesel, kerosene and bitumen. That's the purpose of fractional distillation. But there's a problem. There's always a problem, isn't there? And on this occasion, the problem with fractional distillation is a problem of supply and demand. And it's a little bit like that party you're at, like your grandma's 80th birthday party. And the DJ says the buffet's open, and by the time you've got there, there's no chicken legs left. Yeah, the supply that was put out is not good enough for the demand, and they've all gone. And on the other hand, all the salad's still there because the demand for the salad isn't that great. And that's what we can see in fractional distillation. So let's take that first line in the table. LPG, the percentage that is made from fractional distillation is 2%, but we actually need 15% for our homes. That's a massive, massive problem. And the same thing with petrol. 6% um, is made out of the barrel in fractional distillation, but the actual demand that's needed is 34%. And the same for diesel. You can see we need more than we actually make. On the reverse, the salad part of it is kerosene and bitumen. You can see that the kerosene, 13% is made, but actually we only need 8%. And bitumen makes a whopping great big 58%, but we only need 20%. So let me just summarize that for you on this screen. So bitumen, which is a long chain uh, hydrocarbon, an alkane, there's too much of it and it's really long. And petrol is a shorter chain um, alkane and there's not enough of it. So how do we make more petrol from the bitumen that we've got left over? Dead simple, really. It's a process called cracking. And what happens is that long chain um, bitumen there, you imagine it. And if you could crack it and go crack, crack, crack crack and crack into smaller pieces. You've no longer got bitumen, you've got petrol. Now I'm oversimplifying it, it's not quite that simple. And the chemical process that takes place is gonna be described to you at another time. But for now, what I would like you to just understand is that bitumen can be cracked into smaller pieces. Okay, I'd like to share an example as it may appear in an exam question with you. I think it's the best way of doing it. So I've got an alkane. C12 is 26, double 12 is 24, and add 2 is 26. So it is an alkane. And I'm going to call it a longer alkane. Now, if I put that alkane under a high temperature with the presence of a catalyst, it will begin to crack. Now, that process will be explained to you at some other time uh, in more detail. But I'm going to say that I could crack it and make a piece of C10H22. And that bit there, C10H22, is definitely an alkane, shorter than the first alkane we started with, and it would perform part of the petrol fraction. Now, if I start with 12 carbons and I've made an alkane of 10 carbons, then I'm missing two carbons, aren't I? 
And if I start with 26 hydrogens and I end up with 22 hydrogens, I'm missing four of them. So I'm actually going to make another small uh, molecule, another small hydrocarbon, C2H4. Can you see the problem? Well, it's not a problem, but can you see something about that C2H4? It doesn't fit that pattern, does it? Which means it's not an alkane. It's an alkene. And if you noticed, I've, I've underlined the two E's in alkene from the word from the first time I mentioned it in these series of lessons. And the reason for that is this, an alkene molecule, to be part of that form family, you have to fit the pattern CnH2n. In other words, not double it and add two, just double it. And that is the general formula for alkenes. Double E means you just double the number. Now, C2H4 is the only one that you need to know the name of to pass your exam. C2H4, you think about it, monkeys eat peel bananas. The second one of the, in the alkane family is ethane, and it has two carbons. Well, ethene is two carbons too. C2H4 is known as ethene. Now, very low stakes on the exam might be you finishing off uh, or starting even one of these equations. So there are two equations on the board. This is about counting the number of carbons and the number of hydrogens. See if you can complete those two. Pause the video now and we'll check it in a second. Okay, so C22, H46 makes C14, H30. What have I got left? I've got C8, H16. And that is definitely an alkene molecule because it double the number of eight, double the number of carbons from eight to 16 means it's just double. And the one at the bottom there, we were after the name of the long alkane that we're gonna crack at the beginning. So all we need to do is add up what we've got in front of us. So eight and six is 14, and 18 and 12 is 30. So C14, H30 is the alkane that we would start with. Okay, so I just wanna explore this ethene, the one that you're supposed to know the name of, the one that you have to be able to draw. So ethene is C2H4. We saw that a little while ago. Now, what that means is two carbons and four hydrogens. And so if I start to draw it out, it's going to look a little bit like that. And we know that each hydrogen is joined to each carbon by a single covalent bond in that way. And we know that the two carbons also must be joined. So I've got my two carbons and I've got my four hydrogens, and yet the diagram is not complete. And there's a reason for that. If we look at it, can you remember that each carbon has to have four covalent bonds coming out of it? And at the moment on the screen, each one only has three. So how do we solve that problem? It's almost like a problem that comes out of a Christmas cracker, this, moving those matchsticks around. I need to add one more matchstick to this diagram. And the place that you would add it is in the middle. If I add that, that matchstick there or that bond in the middle, now each carbon has four covalent bonds coming out of it and so the diagram is drawn correctly and what we've got now is we've got a double covalent bond between the carbon atoms and again it's about recall double e double the number double bond and so finally the work that i want you to email to your teacher here's the question the question is a compare question and what i would like you to do is compare fully ethane c2h6 and ethene C2H4. Now, just to give you a little bit of help, I want to model to you what a compare question is going to involve. So, here's a, a poster from a movie back in the day, and the movie was called Twins. And believe it or not, those two gentlemen on the screen there were twins. If you were comparing those two twins, what you would do is you'd start to talk about things they have in common and things that are different about them. So, you could say that they're both wearing a nice beige suit. They've got the same shirt on. They're both wearing shades. But if you were then to say something that's different about them, you could say that the guy on the left is much taller than the guy on the right. You could say that the guy on the left is stood up straight. The guy on the right is leaning. You could say the guy on the left has a full head of her, whereas the guy on the right is going bald. So what we're doing is we're comparing those two people. And I'd like you to do that for ethane and ethene and email the work to your teacher. Take care, everybody.